There has not been a repeat Big East Conference champion since 1998-99 when UConn did it. Now the Big East big boys are back on display, including Carl Krauser and the season champion Pittsburgh Panthers, who will... Day two of the Big East Championship at Madison Square Garden in New York. Today, quarterfinal round action. In the first of four games, the regular season conference champion Pitt Panthers take on the Virginia Tech Hokies. Pittsburgh had a first round bye yesterday while the Hokies beat Rutgers to advance. It's championship week presented by 7-Up. Later today, Syracuse meets Boston College. Tonight, Connecticut against Notre Dame and Providence and Villanova. Sean McDonough with Jay Billis, Bill Raftery, and Doris Burke, and other stars on display beyond you two gentlemen. Well, for Virginia Tech, the horse all season long has been Bryant Matthews. 23 points per game, nine rebounds on the season, about four offensive rebounds per game. He does it all. Scores, rebounds, steals, you name it. Just like Sean McDonough called, Krauser sets the table, directs the offense, leads the defense. Outstanding performance all year. The big thing for him, I think, good shots, good judgment. It is the garden, and he loves his hometown. I'm a little worried you're starting out being nice to me today. Well, enjoy it. Well, good, night, good night's sleep. Chris Taft controlled the tip for Pittsburgh, dressed in the white, and we're underway. The first of four quarterfinal games today. Delighted to have you with us on ESPN2. And Sean McCullough and Jay Billis. The Hokies go. They beat Rutgers by three. They had three very close games here yesterday. Only PC had a relatively comfortable win over Georgetown. Battle for possession, and the ball goes over to Virginia Tech, coached by Seth Greenberg, a young team. Jamon Gordon and Sabian Dowdell, Coleman Collins, all freshmen. Bryant Matthews, the only senior, and he's their star. First team all-conference and the leading scorer in the league at 23 per game in the regular season. And Sean, they're concerned about turnovers. If they don't turn it over, they can stay in touch. Matthews. Put up a wild shot. Might have been deflected and root by Taft. And here's Krauser playing in his hometown. And passed up a three as Sales ran out on him. Now Siobhan Troutman. They don't take bad shots, Jay. Virginia Tech doubling when it goes down into the post. They need to find the open man, shoot it, or put it on the floor and get into the lane. Shot clock at 10. Julius Page missed the layup. The tip would not go. Half very nearly a foul on the rebounding action. And a steal by Jerron Brown. And his shot provides the first bucket of the ball game. Those long arms. Run out here. Jamon Gordon answers for the Hokies. Boy, that's one of the best ways for Virginia Tech to score, to try to get it down court quickly so they don't have to grind it out against this Pittsburgh defense that stands you up on every cut. They bump you and knock you off your path. And right now, Gordon on Krauser, he wanted this assignment, according to the coaches. He staggered back pick to get Troutman in the low post. Brown into the lane, short with the runner. Out of bounds, last touch by Virginia Tech. Jamie Dixon, the Big East Coach of the Year in his first season as head coach at Pitt. Julius Page, Jerron Brown, Carl Krauser, Siobhan Troutman, and Chris Taft, that familiar veteran starting lineup. Troutman fouled and he'll shoot two. Tim Higgins with the call, working with Jim Haney and Mike Stevens. Pittsburgh, 27 and 3 in the regular season. The school record for wins in the regular season. What does Virginia Tech have to do to pull off the upset today? They've got to rebound. They've got to keep control of the ball because this team can turn you over. They turned it over the last time they played. They're big and strong. Uh, the big thing is, according to them, is don't turn it over, but also I think a Jay alluded to easy basket. They get a little run out once in a while. It will certainly help them. Virginia Tech had 26 turnovers in their last ball game against Pittsburgh. And this Pittsburgh team, their strength of late has been this young man, Chevy Troutman, and also Chris Taft, who have just dominated the paint, but the guards have not shot the ball well over the last four games. And Jay, I know you kept your sweatsuit on right to tip off. He comes out with a t-shirt on. He's ready to go. Show that big body, Chevy, to impress the opponents. So 
certainly impresses me. I think it impresses people when they go in the lane, he knocks you on your can. Gordon, a tough fadeaway, ripped down by the freshman Taft. Another product of New York City from Coney Island, out of Severian High School. It's also produced Chris Mullen. Pretty fair player in this league. Not bad. I think his brother Terrence teaches in his assist there. Nice Chris. post entry. Oh. Boy, they isolate the post so well. And Jay, you mentioned that body. He's a great screener. Troutman really understands how to get guys. He understands how to play post defense as well. Look how far Brian Matthews is going to have to come out to get the ball. He's not going to get that low block against Troutman. And he gets a hit every time he moves, too. Stands people up. Great strength. Ooh. And a turnover. Sales couldn't handle the pass. They don't turn it over much, and they do take it away. That's the key to success for Virginia Tech. Just the isolation of that low block. you got to get more pressure on the ball. Xavier Dowdell's got to really get into Jerron Brown, make him turn his back. If you can at least discourage that pass for a second, you might not be able to get it. Timeout. Called by Page as he hit the floor. These two teams played once in the regular season at Pittsburgh on January 6th. Jamie Dixon... And the Panthers victorious in that one, 78 to 59. We mentioned the action yesterday, and Carl and Frank both before with his bad back play for Connecticut tonight. They don't know the answer to that yet. He was not here for their walkthrough, did not participate in their walkthrough this morning at 9 o'clock. Well, next week is obviously very important as they once again go to their go to guy, at least from my seat. Brown has that ability with the great length in his arms to tower over people, but right. I, I would think they're worried just to finish the Okafor thought uh, more so for the NCAA. Mm -hmm. Well, and you're worried about him being completely healthy. If, if he's not going to make it any worse, I think that's fine to play, but he's got a lot more at stake than just the Big East tournament. Deron Brown made the first free throw. The foul was on Marcus Sales. His first. Was it hard for you guys to believe, as it was for me, that not a single Pitt Panther made all Big East first team? No. You're thinking that well, I mean, it's so hard when you think of them and their accomplishments. It is unusual, but they, the composite is really team, and different That's guys right. bite you every game. Well, I thought Krauser should have been first team. Ahead of say, how many people do you want to have on the first team? Well, if they're going to have seven, then put put another guy on it. Well, why don't we put you on the team? Well, all right. <laughs> Brian Matthews is done. They already put seven people on the team. I thought that was, you know, Which usually exactly five the people. Point. They tried to make people happy. They had a seven-man team. You want to have eight, nine? I want to have Carl Crowd. I want to have, I want somebody from the championship team to be on it. Nice pass and dive by Troutman. Boy, Jay comes to New York. He's irascible. Yeah, I don't know what happened to him. It's amazing. I don't know. Must be the expense at dinner. It's all seashells and balloons for you guys. I came into this game like the Pitt Panthers, mad. Well, the team that has to be mad is this club. Nice penetration, Dowdell. No basket. The Dowdell will shoot a couple. Julius Page called for the foul, his first. They've really got to get Page going. He's struggled from the field. He's five of his last 30. And I think he's starting to press a little bit. He settles on occasion for that jump shot. That's part of the difficulty. I think getting in the lane and being creative will help him. Why don't we just put him on the first team all league? Think maybe he'll <laughs> loosen up a little. <laughs> Fabian Dowdell, the freshman from Pahokee, Florida. I mentioned yesterday, dubbed the... Pokey from Pahokee by their broadcaster Bill Roth. Kept alive by Matthews, and now a chance for the lead for Virginia Tech nearly five minutes in. Well, you see more because they're bad free throw shooting. Offensive rebounds, it's amazing. People can't pinch. Nice help here. Krauser, who should have been on first team. <laughs> Running the floor with Taft. He wisely kept it himself and laid it in, and the Panthers lead by three. Off the ball. I mean, he's so tenacious, really reads well. Well, you got to give some credit to the big guys there for slowing down Matthews as he was trying to get to the high post on that screen. They bump you and grind you on every possession. Now, Troutman is wearing number 22. In the maroon, that is. Banging him. Look at the hand heads and just staying at home. Matthews 
Drives the baseline and has it blocked in a timeout. The number one seed, Pitt Panthers, led by Carl Krauser out to a three-point lead. It's quarterfinal round action from Madison Square Garden. Lunchtime here in New York City, and Pittsburgh leads Virginia Tech by three. We're pleased to be joined again today by Doris Burke. Hi, Doris. Hey, Sean. A real New York flavor to this University of Pittsburgh basketball team. Three of the five boroughs of New York represented, led by Big East most improved player Carl Krauser. He hails from the Bronx. Chris Taft, a product of Brooklyn, the Big East Rookie of the Year, and a major factor off the bench of late Mark McCarroll, hailing from Queens. Jamie Dixon's first move as head coach of the University of Pittsburgh maintained the services of assistant coach Barry Rorson. He went to the same high school as Chris Taft, Zavarian. Those New York roots guys have really paid dividends for this program. Yeah, they've done a great recruiting job here in the city, especially Barry Rorson there in the background. Barry gets a lot of pub, and rightfully so, yes. it might end. As well he should, and Jamie Dixon, a New York guy as well, although he went to high school out in California, North Hollywood, kind of turned his back on his Hollywood roots, hasn't he? <laughs> well, as we noted before, a actor, child actor. Childhood actor. He's got the looks, uh, something that escaped all three of us. <laughs> they just grind you away, don't they? And Krauser's three wouldn't go. Nice job by Sales. Kept the rebounder live for himself. And the push for the Hokies down by three. You wonder if Pittsburgh is starting to think about the fact that their guards have not been shooting the ball well at all the last five games. Foul called. Pittsburgh bench didn't like it. The Syracuse game in particular, they struggled from deep, and I think Syracuse defense has improved quite a bit. Pittsburgh does such a great job defensively. You can see as the ball's reversed. You can see Bryant Matthews getting out of the low block. He gets bumped right there by Chris Taft when he gets bumped. That just slows their timing down. That's what ultimately helped lead to that steal by Carl Krauser, the score on the other end. The bumping and grinding with your cuts just really slows everything down. You can't get your timing on your sets. They really impede your progress. And that's what they do beautifully. Try make a cut. They just bang you up legally, hand hedge legally. Corey Morris at 6'10", 282 into the ball game for Pittsburgh. The three throws by Coleman Collins have made it a one-point game. The last foul was on Jerron Brown, his first. Okay, a couple of these bodies, and Page gets his first clean look and knocks it down. A couple of these Pittsburgh bodies look like they should play for the Steelers. Morris and Troutman in particular. Much better stroke there for Julius Page. Maybe that'll get him going. He's a much better shooter than he has shown over the last five games. The shooters lose their rhythm, and there's the arm extended, and crowds are frustrating. It starts at the top, the great defense, and they'll, they'll just a little upset. They haven't been able to penetrate at all. First foul on Dowdell, and the third against the Hokies. Down by three with 13 and a half left in the first half. Krauser. The Brown with Page, Troutman, and Morris for Pittsburgh. A quick duck in, and Brown had too much pressure on him to see in there. I thought the Troutman was open. And I, I think Matthews did a pretty good job, though, considering the loss and the difference in weight. He's not going to be able to help as much with Troutman, who's a terrific offensive rebounder. And a three and a long one for Julius Page, the senior from Buffalo, New York. The slump could be over. It's over. Huh? He's got the rhythm. Gordon, off for Dowdell, a nice baseline jumper. Boy, there's a little battle going. It's a big battle, actually, on the low block. Matthews look, looks like he's wearing a 275-pound overcoat right now. Uh, you know, he doesn't have the pins to really hold off an established position. He's you wonder about his stamina. He's been bothered by a flu bug this week. Clearly wasn't 100% yesterday, and now has to come back the very next day. Jamon Gordon for the Hokies. He has four. He's a freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, this Virginia Tech team just hangs tough. And they really do it on the defensive end, don't they? Yes, they do. Both of these teams hang their hat on the defense. Now, they play as opponents average just 59 points per game this year. Wild shot by Page off the side of the backboard.
Philip McCandy fouled. Got a shooting foul, and we'll get a TV timeout. The foul on Morris, his first. Guys led by Keith Wallaskowski, the left-hander who's had a terrific season, probably hasn't gotten noticed for it. Well, we saw them in Maui, and they certainly have had a good year, but how about Richmond? I mean, they happen to play, you see the Kansas game, and they're a good basketball team. It's going to be tough when you get down to those last five or six picks. Richmond won at Kansas and also at Colorado, so they've got a couple wins to hang their hat on. Virginia Tech hanging in there with the regular season champion. Of course, Pittsburgh still very much a candidate for a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. They could help that cause significantly with success here at the Big East. Well, they've been able to twice now get in the lane once the corner jump shot. And that time, the knockdown. Demetrius in the game now. Ben Holland last year talked about what a great shooter he was, and he struggled with his shot. I'm sure that, particularly against zones, we'd love to see him start knocking him down. Good screen here. And a foul called outside by Mike Stevens. The last bucket by Jermon Gordon gives him six points. Foul on Sean Harris, just in off the bench. His first and the team's fourth. Feldman's coming back in. And Morris will take a seat for Pittsburgh. The defending Big East Tournament champions. They've been in the final each of the last three years. And Carroll in the game screen and then gets the double. He's really had a nice year as a sub. Picks them up on both ends of the floor. Pittsburgh has a variety of different sets, and they run them through to completion. This team runs their stuff, as coaches like to say. And Matthews is going to have to work on this end all the way through the trip because Troutman's active and hits the glass. He's going to have a body on him on both ends. Browser in amongst the trees. Out of bounds. Pittsburgh ball. Six seconds on the shot clock. Championship week presented by 7-Up. Continues with games on ESPN and ESPN2. After our game here on ESPN2, Boston College and Syracuse made another Big East quarterfinal. Also a two on ESPN. It's Big Ten tournament action, Minnesota and Purdue. That's available in ESPN HD. A steal by Dowdell. An excellent defensive trip. We're talking about pitch defense, Jay. They do a nice job on the perimeter in particular. Well, they get so many deflections, and that's really a key of how active you are, not only with your feet, but also with your hands. Banana steal by Krauser, but he couldn't stay in bounds. If he were first team, he would have stayed in bounds. <laughs> He was the most improved player in the league. There are the ranks for Pitt. The hallmark during these successful years under Ben Howland and Jamie Dixon has been the defense. One challenge shot. They don't turn you over all that much. They don't get a whole lot of steals. But what they do is make you take a challenge jump shot, and they make sure it's only one shot per possession. Uh, first look, uh, the Matthews really rushed it to Carol Lomi. He shot that very quickly in the long range. Well, Tim Higgins and Mike Stevens blew the whistle. And they're going to call Matthews for the foul. Seth Greenberg very upset. Uh, it's really funny. Now you go to Timmy Higgins, who's the senior official right here, and uh, I just think that unable to get shots. I guess you got to call that, Jay. He ran right through the screen at some point, trying to hustle a little overzealous in his denial. If Mike Stevens called, but it's Tim Higgins who Seth Greenberg is wearing out over there. Nicely, I assure you. Yes. Well, I think I think he may have an argument, but wait a second. We're getting bumped on every possession down there, and our guy's trying to get to the ball handler, and you're calling that? Feltman called for charge. Good, solid defense. We alluded to their ability. Really good understanding. That time the sophomore McCandies stepped in and drew the charge. Terrific job coming over from the weak side, and... You know, this team, when Seth Greenberg decided they were going to make their foundation man-to-man -man defense, has really responded very well. They help each other five as one on the defensive end. 
He liked to play 1-3-1 one, one zone, but he felt like this team wasn't long enough to be effective in a 1-3-1 one, one zone. Moving screen called against Virginia Tech. It's on McCandy, his first. Here's Doris Burke. Now, Sean had an opportunity to talk with Seth Greenberg before the game today. He said, you know what, we're never artistic. He said, but I've tried to show my guys on two things. Number one, compete every day, every play, and embrace your role. Whatever you do, do it to the best of your ability. They're scrapping and clawing out here, hanging tough with Pittsburgh early, guys. Well, that's a really good point, Doris. Jerron Brown gets another basket inside. Boy, he's so tough in there. But weren't you, weren't you impressed with what he said, uh, Seth Greenberg, about Brian Randall, the, the role that he played in, in leadership in the locker room? What was it he said? He coached the locker room for him. Nice step in here. Speaking of being coached, huh? And Carroll, are they going the other way? Let's see. Yeah, offensive foul was the call. And... Tim Higgins making sure that McCarroll's okay. The foul on Dowdell, his second. Uh, the ability to play defense, we've been alluding on both ends of the floor, and I think what Pitt does best, Jay, a uh, pretty easy call, is make you use clock on offense because they're so sound, force you, as you noticed, into a challenge shot or a tough shot. Well, uh, Dowdell goes out of the ballgame, and Brian Randall, Jay was just speaking of, comes into the ballgame, the starting quarterback on the Virginia Tech football team. He joined the Hokies at the first of the year. Well, Greenberg said he really wasn't sure what kind of basketball player Randall was, but Randall wanted to join the team. He was a very good player in high school, played on the state championship team. And he's been a nice role player and a very important leadership presence for the Hokie hit team. There's Taft scoring inside his first bucket. Well, what a difference in Taft. He waited for the double team to leave and then made his move. And went away from the double. You know what's amazing? You can't play great defense against Pitt continually because they go inside so well with so many different people. Knocked out of bounds by Jerron Brown. The 21 on the shot clock for the Hokies on their way to the ACC next season. Ryan Matthews coming over. He turns all of a sudden and leaves and the nice move the head fake and going the other way the question is why did he leave yeah he should <laughs> body up and make it a tough delivery down to 10 on the shot clock sales sophomore from richmond they need to do something they're not gonna get a shot up and that's late doesn't count, and then it goes in, a shot clock violation. How about Taft, huh? I mean, that's a, he's the one that caused it. Uh, really hedged and stayed out there. But that's their mentality. Make you use all the clock. That's why they're not going up and down. They're so sound. They might want to start Virginia Tech putting the ball on the floor and trying to get to the basket. And if they do get bumped, turn into it and see if you can draw a foul. Look at this work down here. My goodness. Well, they missed a short one. And here's Sales the other way for the Hokies. Now Coleman Collins and Krauser called the reach-in foul. Well, that, that was pretty good reaction by Krauser out there. That's his first foul. We have a timeout. Pittsburgh leads Virginia Tech 19 to 15 as championship week continues here at the Big East. <laughs> About that score. Mm. You think St. Joe's the number one seed in the NCAA tournament no matter what? Not, no. They're not threatened at all. They're going to be a number one really? seed. Really? Yep. You don't agree with that, Governor? It's well, I, I think people will start reconsidering those other conferences because of the strength of schedules of the Big 12 and the Southeast. And quite frankly, if Pitt ran the table here. But St. But St. Joe's played a better schedule than Stanford did. I think Stanford is in more jeopardy of losing the number one seed, a number one seed, than would be St. Joe's if they were to lose to Xavier or lose to Rhodey or Dayton in this tournament. Hmm. Come on, Gordon. Nice walk. And a short one missed by Sean Harris. And Matthews fouled on the putback. Uh, Gordon really threaded the needle, and he's hobbling. Earlier in the game, he fell. See him hobbling here, Sean? They took him out, retaped him, and 
I don't know if it'll be much of a factor, as you noted, penetrating, which I think is something they did it twice and were successful on a kick and then on a finish. Hellman called for his second foul. Matthews, a 66% free throw shooter. Missed the first. Seven and a half to go. Gordon and Harris talking to each other as Harris goes out of the game. Gordon saying, hey, what about my assist, man? He got to knock that down. He should have. That was I, one of those you can't blow. Three-point game. This is Antonio Graves, freshman from Mansfield, Ohio, running the point right now. And he's been really learning how to play, too. Early in the year, got some time, took advantage of it. Julius Page needs to go right at Gordon if he gets switched off on him. He, just, he was just switched off on him a second ago, whether it's Graves or Page. I think they need to go right at him. You believe in taking advantage of the injured. Hey, if he's in the game, he's got to play ball. Therefore, we should get after Sean. McCarroll, the big fellow, way out there to try to shoot a three. Pretty nice. pass. Taft to Brown and waited in. A nice job by McCarroll patiently. A lot of guys would have tipped that ball. He saw it going in. Withdrew the hand. Matthews well short with his step back shot. Saved in front of the bench by Jerron Brown. Pittsburgh starting to open up a little bit of a margin. Up by five with the ball. Seth Greenberg upset at Matthews. Really taking some shots. A little out of sorts right now. Brown to the right-handed runner. And a bound. Appeared as though nobody knew where the ball was. It's Virginia Tech's ball. Let's get an update on Emeka Okafor's situation from Doris. Sean, we've just been informed that ESPN.com is reporting that Emeka Okafor, after being examined today, has a small fracture that is causing the back spasms. He can play up to his own pain tolerance without further injury risk. That is being reported by team doctor. Uh, so that's what we've got thus far. That was Jeff Anderson, the team doctor, giving us that information. Thanks, guys. I wonder if it can play up to Jim Calhoun's pain tolerance. <laughs> well, you mentioned that, you know, the future is so important. I, they will do nothing. And I'm sure the youngster will agree to what, or tell them what he can do. Page a miss with the offensive rebound by Taft, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. Maybe the national, huh, as well? Player of the year, a great example for anybody. All those high school kids who have aspirations of being players, uh, put it all together. Certainly covers all your bases like he did. What a knuckleball. That had no rotation on it at all. Point Wilhelm. Those are both Scroogies there. He's a 60% free throw shooter. You think he would have more free throw attempts? Only 60 all year for a guy who's around the bucket a lot. He throws that jump hook. I don't think he attacks the rim as ferociously as he will. He's got to eventually have a total game. Matthews gets it to go. Maybe that'll get him started. Five points for Bryant Matthews, the senior from Columbia, South Carolina. Greenberg really did a nice job. If Brown was on him. He knew he could get him in the low box and elevate over. But it was still a tough shot because yep. Brown got right into him. And the anticipation by Matthews. And Krauser lets him dunk it. Well, it's amazing what one deuce at one end does for you. Alertly playing the passing lane, something they do beautifully. Where they got steals against Rutgers yesterday and steals again today. That is a lazy pass, and Matthews makes him pay. And that's one of the many areas where Brian Matthews puts numbers on the board, not just his post game, able the ability to step away and face up, but he gets scores from his defense, creating his offense. He had 67 steals in the regular season. That's the sixth highest single season total in the history of Virginia Tech basketball. Championship week presented by 7-Up continues tonight with ACC first round action. At 7 Eastern, Clemson takes on Virginia. And at 9.30 Eastern, we're back here at the Garden for Villanova and Providence. The final Big East Championship quarterfinal today. That's available in high definition on Spectacular ESPN HD. 
Even you guys look good in this <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, particularly, <laughs> particularly today. <laughs> Now they're getting some points off turnovers, and that's really an easier basket, so important against a pit team. Brown rises and shoots, and that's a three. Deron Brown, a 24-year-old senior from Lexington, Kentucky, originally committed to Kentucky, but then when Rick Pacino left, he decided not to go, went to prep school, and wound up at Pittsburgh. And I think that's part of their strength. Older guys really know how to play the game, more mature. Matthews trying to power to the bucket was stripped. And it'll be Virginia Tech's ball. Jay, he just scored on the low box. I know they run a screen, and now the strength of Brown. To me now, I'd give it up and get back inside. What do you think? Well, look how far he pushed him out just to catch the ball. That's really the key. He's not letting him have that low block. Great save by Krauser. Two on one. Tap. Missed it. McCarroll there to help. And he's fouled. Looked like Carroll couldn't decide if he wanted to dunk that or lay it in. He did, he did want to dunk it at first and thought better of it. I thought McCarroll took a couple hops before he went up with it. I thought he walked with it. And, and the end on his brown, what a great pass when you think. I thought he was going to lob it at first, but he uh, just put it up there for the big fellow to finish. But I think McCarroll got a little hippity hop going for himself. What kind of game did Mark McCarroll have earlier this year? I think it was against Georgia where he had 26 points. 11 for 11, right? Was I think Doris game? did that game, did, did the color on that game, and I, I'm sure she couldn't believe it either. I was like, who, who got into him? And I think the last one he took was a three and missed. Yeah, he started out 11 for 11 and ended 11 for 12. Was it Brian Shorter, the first guy? Yeah, the pit record for field goal percentage in a game of Brian Shorter, 11 for 11. Twenty seconds on the shot clock, and Krauser with the steal after Page almost swiped it. Krauser lays it in. Timeout, Virginia Tech. Seven unanswered points for Pittsburgh right after the Hokies had it down to one. You had better be strong with the ball, whether it's on the catch or on the pass, and that pass, not a very good one. And Pittsburgh making you pay. The terrific job bringing it down, making the defense play it, and then dropping it off. What a great selling job, huh? They play together beautifully. Yes, indeed they do, Doris. Uh, Sean, just in reference, I did do that game that Jay was referencing. I asked Jamie Dixon about Mark McCarroll's performance over the course of the year. He said, you know what? We believed in his abilities all year long. But when Donato Savaskis was in front of him, it was hard to get him time in that position. But he's had a great punch, and it really was just a matter of getting opportunities for this young man because he certainly is skilled. Well, that's a great example of sticking with it over the course of your career. Some guys develop at different rates. So I think people now expect if you don't come in as a freshman and knock the bottom out of it that you're not any good. And, you know, some guys develop over three years and really turn it on as a junior. Pretty good high school coach, too. Bobby Oliva at Christ the King. Uh, defensively, I don't think he was up to their standard for a while last year. Well, they're struggling on the perimeter. He was double. Matthews, desperation. Three with the shot clock Woo. running out. Woo. Boy, he, what, what a play drawn up by Seth Greenberg. Is, Very nicely done. He has not had any easy ones. Come on, Seth. Get him the ball. He's hot. Seth Greenberg in his first year at Virginia Tech after his stints as the head coach at South Florida and Long Beach State. Both of those places took over programs that were down and turned them into winners. There's only a two losing season that a coach was in his first year at each of those two stops. They have a winning record this year, 15 and 13, heading into this one. After just an 11 win season last year for the Hokies. Foul on McCarroll, his first, and a timeout at the Big East Championship at Madison Square Garden. Shocking score. Not as big a surprise here. Well, you have to give Virginia Tech a lot of credit. Hanging in there, playing on back-to-back -back days while Pittsburgh had the day off yesterday. Bryant Matthews having to work for everything. Not the defensive trauma is extraordinary, Jay. And uh, the best, I fell in love with this play. Now watch the double from the top. A great read. I believe it was Page came down. And how about this discard? 
you know, everything is, is difficult for Brian Matthews. He has to catch it further out. He's getting bumped on every possession. Even that was a difficult play, getting the ball against Jerron Brown, just six foot four. But he really gets into you, and when you are played this physically, you really have to respond and meet that physical challenge. So far, Brian Matthews has done that. Sean, an off day yesterday, just 10 points, 13 below his average. But that was the... 47th game in a row in double figures for Matthews. I, I was uh, just going to say we're working with Vince McMahon. He thinks that uh, Virginia Tech should start banging back. He thinks Pitt gets away with physical play. Well, they, they're a physical team, and I applaud them for playing that way. But you know, if you're coaching against him, you say, look, take that ball to the basket, and you turn right into that and make the referee make the call. Nice post pass again, and then the save from the rear. Uh, but the big thing, I think, if your team is unaccustomed to doing it, the referee seemed to call it on you. Yeah, but look, he's just being grabbed, right? right. Like, that's grabbing. But I, I think you've got to watch this. When he, gets the ball, when he gets the ball in there, I mean, you can't go away from that contact. You've got to go right into it. And if you bounce off it like a, a pinball, they're not going to call anything. Come on, Gordon just got called for his third foul. Page makes the first free throw. And Sean Harris is going to check in for Gordon. His mobility hampered as well. You shoot a jump shot like Matthews just did in that replay, and a guy rides you up. You can't make that shot. No, it's almost impossible. Two free throws by Page. Out of Turner Carroll High School up in the Buffalo area. His high school no longer in existence. High school closed down for budgetary reasons at the end of the 2002-2003 academic year. They won a couple of state titles in the late 90s in basketball. I think, didn't you pay him go to the... the yeah, I believe uh, Jamie Dixon did Jamie as well. Yeah. They had a ceremony to close the school. They like to the double and rotate. Nice slip. Ooh, good cover, though. And the dunk by Taft. Uh, did everything right except corral the ball at the end. Oh, that is a shame. Great defense and negated by inability to cover it. McCarroll block. Wow, you talked about barreling into somebody. That's what they did, and they got called for the charge. I'll take that one. Fight That's back. what you're talking about, right? Fight back. Oh, that's a shame right here. Everything but. And a hearty send it in. I mean, he is really a kid that I think has a big upside on the offensive end. Not necessarily that jump, but he is a physical performer, and he's got a little touch. Reminds me a little bit of Chris Wilcox, used to play at Maryland. Mm -hmm. Chris now with the Clippers. Boy, there's an awful lot of pushing and shoving in this game. And a rebounding foul against the Panthers. I believe it might be McCarroll on this one. They're over the limit, so it will be a shooting situation. The foul on McCarroll is second. Championship week presented by 7-Up. Continues tonight on ESPN. 7 Eastern, Clemson and Virginia. First round action for the ACC. Then here at the Garden at 9.30 Eastern time. More Big East quarterfinal action. Villanova against the 17th ranked Providence College Friars. Available in high definition on ESPN HD. Halloway makes the first. Allen's a sophomore from Gretna, Virginia. What kind of an offense do you think would work against Pitt? The single wing. <laughs> <laughs> the lonesome end. I'm just thinking it's very hard if you bring everybody into the lane because they occupy with strength that area. Almost a spacing concept or Texas Tech kind of a like constant screening. isolate. Yeah. Isolate guys on the side. Matthews kept the miss alive. Randall had it swatted by McCarroll. Nice pass. Ooh. And then in the shoulder shimmy. A la Mark Jackson by Krauser. Bowser to Taft to give Pittsburgh a 10-point lead under a minute to go in the half. Basket and poise. That's what you've got to have now. Look how deep Matthews is. That's about the only place he can get an open look. Look NBA at Krauser. Three. Great athleticism by Krauser. All the way to the bucket. Brown a tip. Sales has it. The chance for the last shot for the Hokies if they want it. They do have numbers. 
So Matthews heads to the basket and gets called for an offensive foul. I, I just think they're going to give Pitt a chance. You've got to use the clock there and go down by eight, if possible, or seven, or stay at ten. It's not good basketball. Second foul on Matthews. Pittsburgh will really lay their bodies on the line. Ron Brown coming over to take that charge. They are unafraid of the physical challenge. A little hesitation move. Five seconds. Krauser at the buzzer. No basket, says Tim Higgins. I think they might go to the monitor. But he waved off the putback, and now they are going to go take a look at it. I think he got it right. I, I do, too. You know, they've got to make some sort of a signal. If there's a malfunction or they can't detect it, that's why they definitely make the signal and then look at the uh, monitor, as you noted. Tim Higgins over at the scores table. He'll look at the replay. This is the NBA arena where they have the backboard that lights up around the edge, indicating the end of the half. Well, they are going to count it. Wow. Ooh. He's pretty good. Well, I don't know, boys. No, no, no way. I think he should look again. Yeah, I don't know what angle he saw, but looked like it was in his hands when that orange rim was illuminated. Unless he could see the clock. Well, Still in his hand at zero and the no, lights, the lights on. on. Yeah, There's no way. Bad call. Holy cow. It's not out of his hand. Yep. That is a bad call. Well, they probably gave him, me. They probably only gave him one look instead of a couple. Well, he probably should ask for another yeah. one. Absolutely. I mean, he, said no, he said no basket and then changed it on that. You've got to be kidding me. Well, maybe he'll look at it again. But for now, at least it stands and a 12 point lead for Pittsburgh. They end the half on a 15 to 4 run. Let's join Carl and Fran for the 7 up halftime report. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden. We're at halftime championship week presented by 7 up. Virginia Tech hasn't been getting dribble penetration against this tough pit team. They've been a very physical game, and Pittsburgh likes it when they can play physically. They excel on the defensive end in particular, holding Virginia Tech to just 9 of 28, the rebounding even. And Seth Greenberg talks about the key for their team to be protect the ball, don't turn it over, and cause steals, and their formula is not working today with 13 turnovers against this great defense. Well, because of the physical defense of Pittsburgh in the front court for the Panthers, 9 of 14 for 21 of the 34 points. Get a little more on that sequence at the end of the half and at halftime from Doris Burke. Well, Sean, I had an opportunity to speak with Tim Higgins, and essentially he made a decision looking at the first replay. The standby official, Pat Driscoll, had an opportunity to look at a slow mo replay and several different angles. There is Pat Driscoll. They conferred. He had Tim Higgins come out and look again. That's when they changed their decision, and Tim said it's a scoring and timing error, which counts as a, collect a correctable error, and you're allowed to correct it up to the second dead ball. Obviously, we have not had any play here in the second half. So it, you're right, guys. It is nice to be able to get the call right. And good work by the standby official. Be alert to that. And Pat might be on camera there. We got a little smile from him. Second half underway, and Gordon is trying to go on a gimpy leg. Marcus Sales, and now Bryant Matthews. Inside with Allen Calloway, one on one with Tab. The jump hook, rebounded by Troutman. And that's where Callaway's got to get a lot stronger. When he gets into that lane, just got bumped right out of there. Tell you, Brown checked out. I mean, he lays some wood on people. Brown led Pittsburgh with 10. Bryant Matthews had 10 to lead the Hokies in the first half. Nice stagger screen. Get Page the luck. And the bucket. For Julius Page, he has nine. It's really about open shots for Julius Page. When he's open, he team seems to take better shots than when he's challenged. You know, stepping in a little bit, that rhythm you get, a little feel. Don't rush it. Gordon, shut off. Um, very good defense by Page. Oh, I think Krauser just would have discard there, yeah. just threw. That's like in the schoolyard. Back of the head. Schoolyard, you do that as Jamie looks on. 
And right here, that little stagger, Jay, I mean, you're right. Just effective when he is under control and ready. And pretty good. He got his feet set backing on into that shot. These guards have struggled a little bit shooting the ball over the last four or five games. And if they shoot it well with the play of the inside guys, especially Chevy Troutman, they're really hard to beat. Uh, the Gimpy uh, didn't affect them down in the box there, huh? Weren't able to knock it down. He's a key to their team. They're seven and four in Big East Conference games this year that Gordon has started. He was out at the beginning of the conference schedule with a meniscus tear in his right knee that required a scope. They've won four in a row, their longest winning streak ever in the Big East in their four-year history. Brown to path for two, and the lead widens up to 12 for the Panthers. What a pass. Unbelievable. Hey, you know, this is a response to Jay. Uh, they're a team. There isn't one guy. They help on defense that time to double pass to Taft. I mean, that's just incredible. Out of bounds to Pittsburgh. You said what a pass. Yeah, one of the strengths of last year's team was their interior passing, and that is still the case, even though Jerron Brown, just 6'4", when he is inside posting, a very good passer. Bowser open for three. And the other problem there, Gordon couldn't move at all. Didn't get out. Got trapped inside. So effective finding people. Looks like the officials might crack down a little bit on the chucking here in the second half. And Page with that nickel dimer. Do you think the crackdown by the officials makes Seth Greenberg feel any better now that he's 15 points down? <laughs> no, no, you're right. You know, it needs to be done when the game is on the line. Actually, now, I'm you taking the officials. Last night, yeah, then. I don't think he's a very happy guy. <laughs> <laughs> he must be, he's got to go back home and go to work. The three wouldn't go for Zabian Dowdell. But the follow-up and good for Gordon, and he has 10. Shown his toughness, too. You know, we've all had that bad ankle. Tough to perform. You've still got it. <laughs> bad ankles, bad knees. The elbow seemed to be working fine last night. <laughs> Half inside. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, it's great to be able to use either hand. Championship week presented by 7-Up Games on ESPN and ESPN2. Following our game right here on ESPN2, Boston College and Syracuse. In a regular season meeting, Syracuse won up at the Carrier Dome, also at 2 Eastern Minnesota and Purdue in the first round of the Big Ten. That's on high definition, or in high definition, on ESPN HD. Chris Taff, what a coup, I think, for them to get him to come to Pittsburgh. He learns how to make these free throws. That is an unusual. You said screwball, right? Yeah, it looks like a little screwball. Yeah. He's 0 for 4 from the line. More than a knuckler. Got 60% in conference and 60 attempts. 20 seconds to shoot. job lifting making the defense work here use the clock Matthews is a star player works very hard at the defensive end too and here he is with the takeaway just as the shot clock was about to run out for Pitt a little trouble on the dribble for Gordon he maintained his composure and spins one in terrific presence Sean and let the traffic run by I think part of that had to do with the fact he's hurt and he's having a tough time getting up and down the court but he is Cutting it out. Gordon is six out of seven from the floor. There's hope that history will repeat. The defending Big East tournament champions with an 11-point lead in their first game at the 2004 Big East Championship. Here's Doris Burke. Sean, just want to give a bit of further clarification on a Mecca Okafor situation. After speaking with Kyle Muncy, the sports information contact for Connecticut basketball, he just wanted us to be clear that it is a stress fracture as opposed to a small fracture with a Mecca Okafor that is causing his back spasms. Again, his status will be determined by the symptoms and the level of play, uh, pain that those spasms are ca causing. But guys, stress fracture, a lot different than a fracture. Very common among elite athletes to endure stress fractures. Well, common among elite athletes, which explains why none of us ever had one. <laughs> That's great to hear as well. Page short with a three. Good block out by Matthews to keep Troutman away from the ball. And here comes Gordon. 
They so said years ago, stress fracture, people used to say you had a bone bruise. Not really sure how that... Kind of like the high ankle sprain, which in our day was my foot hurts. <laughs> Back in your day, Bill, they used the leeches to treat that. Right? <laughs> oh, it's field day at my expense. Plenty of games left. <laughs> Pretty. Oh, nice. Nicely done with the shot clock running out. Dowdell the penetration and then Callaway the dunk. Now they are hanging. It's just a matter of stops and countering. Callaway coming off one of his best games as a Hokie. Even stepped out and hit a three. They just run their stuff. Plenty of time. You weaken a little. They'll pop you. Just like that. A little breakdown. Be good for you guys to get home. You can finally open up your wallets. <laughs> Timeout. The foul was on sales. His second. Virginia Tech within striking distance with 15 and change to go. We took. So it begs the question we asked earlier, gentlemen. If they go on and get routed in that game, does that affect their seeding? Do they drop out of a number one seed? And uh, would that enhance perhaps the chance of this Pittsburgh team, should they run the table here, to be a number one seed? I think you can make an argument for them to lose their number one seed, but I wouldn't take it away from them. They've lost just one game if Xavier's able to hang on, which I think they will. Uh, and other teams have lost more than that. I mean, how do, you, how do you square putting Pittsburgh in there over St. Joe's when, you know, Pittsburgh was beaten at home uh, by Syracuse. I mean, they lost to UConn and lost to Seton Hall in double overtime. I mean, you've got to honor that undefeated season, in my view. Uh, they may not drop out, but I think it will be talked about. I think that, you know, we talked about the SEC earlier, the Big East. Of course, the Big 12, and, and just assume, say, Duke has one if they win the ACC. And there's the crossed arm look by Krauser. He knocks it down. I, it is a possibility. Do they deserve to lose it? I don't think so, but it could happen. Who's the better team, Pittsburgh or St. Joe's? I would say Pittsburgh. I would, too. They're, well, if they're allowed to, to bump and grind against a team like St. Joe's, but St. Joe's guards are really good. And if they can spread them, hit some shots, I mean, I think Pittsburgh is better because they're older. Uh, they're more uh, physical. They're bigger and stronger inside, and they'll dominate the glass on them. And they do this thing very well, that high-low. That's some distance. They all pass well. I'm not saying St. Joe's could not beat them, Sean, but if on a, on a continual basis, Pitt would be deeper, stronger, tougher, I think. The thing you worry about with, with St. Joe's is if they do get the number one, and, and I still think they're likely to get it, uh, they might play a team in the second round, an 8-9 winner, uh, that is a big shot team from a, a, a big conference. They can wind up getting beaten in the second round. A Shout distinct possibility. Yes, it is. 13-point game. Page missed the three. Callaway ran out to contest it. Out of bounds. It goes over to Virginia Tech. And of course, the team on the bubble here at the Big East Tournament is Notre Dame. A thrilling victory last night. They advance to the second round. That loss to Central Michigan really stands out. They had a terrible year. Well, let me, let me ask you this question. Because of the quality wins that Notre Dame has had, if it came down to Washington or Notre Dame, who do you put in? Ooh. I put in Notre Dame. I would, would too. Washington, as well as they have done coming down the stretch, they've won 12 of their last 14. And Notre Dame coming down the stretch. Yeah, they both played well, but, but Notre Dame's played a much more difficult schedule. Not even close. Matthews has 12 points. There's a runner by Krauser that wouldn't go. And Matthews leads a break, four on two. Oh, my goodness. Boy, he did okay. everything but finish. Now, now here's be, the key. He would be running laps for me, though. He's carried you all year long. Do you take him out? Uh, you know what? I, I think he deserves at least a chat. I mean, I was a senior. Could have done a lot better. I mean, that's one of those that uh, your friends may enjoy. But, oh, my oh. goodness, you don't ever do this, I don't think, to that's opponents. That's crazy. Or your teammates. Wow. And Seth Greenberg turned around and looked at his brother, Brad, who's one of his assistant coaches. Uh, they might have discussed what they should do, but Seth didn't appear to say anything to Matthews. I think next thing he's going to run under the basket and get a flare pen. Well, I think Brad was saying, hey, I had Iverson. That's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, former GM down there with the Sixers. There he is. Really smart basketball man, as is his brother Seth. 
two New York City kids making good. Just missed the deli once in a while. Their dad, Ralph, played for the legendary Claire B at NYU. We mentioned yesterday that Claire B used to visit the Greenberg family home on Long Island when the boys were very young. They had vivid recollections of the legendary coach sitting in the house talking basketball. Jerron Brown used the bank. And he'll have a chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. How about this strength, Jay? Unbelievable. Little kiss at the end, hanging. He was actually looking under the basket, maybe uh, the dump off, but the presence to hang between floors and ring the bell. For Brown, when he's being bumped on the way to the basket, is the equivalent for us sitting out on the porch, swatting away a fly. I mean, that's <laughs> nothing how strong nothing he is. affects him. Foul on Harris is second. 13 points now for Brown. He's already graduated from Pittsburgh. Nice job. Timmy Higgins running in from center court. He's calling an offensive foul. He must have uh, the elbow that side of the floor away from us. The way Timmy ran in there, he didn't like it. I think they're trying to clean it up a little here in the second half. It wasn't vicious in the first half, but there was a lot of bumping and grinding, as Jay said. Now they heard Jay's tape, I think. Gordon to miss. Carroll snatches it out of midair. Running the floor. Troutman. Deceptively quick, that guy. Did you see him early in the game? His man was heading. Jay turns it up a notch. The big body getting down the floor. Nine for the junior from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. One of eight children is Siobhan Troutman. Bowser hit the floor hard, and the foul called on Matthews. This is Championship Week, brought to you by 7-Up ACC Tournament Action today. The first round, Clemson and Virginia at 7 over on ESPN, followed by Villanova and Providence at 9.30 from the Big East here at Madison Square Garden. Available in high definition on ESPN HD. Interesting to see a guy like Jamie Dixon take over pretty much the total package that Ben Howland ran. I'm sure there's been some tweaking, but... Uh, Believing in the system and these guys have bought in and really responded to his tutelage. Yeah, why change it? Yeah. I think that's a sign of good coaching. You have a system in place that works. And of course, Jamie Dixon part of installing that system at Northern Arizona with Ben Howell and then here at Pitt with Ben. Gordon just picked up his fourth foul for Virginia Tech. We'll return to Madison Square Garden right after this. That doesn't help, I don't think. Hard to fathom. Yeah. I, I, you know, just probably all the emotion and pressure when you think of it. You see it slip away. And, you know, a big development in this game. They announced a change in the foul. They charge it to Matthews for that little reach in there. Wow, in the game that's been this physical, that's a ticky-tack fourth foul. Five and dime. Oh, my goodness. McCrory's basement. And then uh, Seth a little bit upset. You guys probably shopped there when you were younger. Seth very upset, rightfully so, I think, with all the banging, as you noted. Carroll, great elevation on that jumper, but he missed the line drive shot. Here's Gordon. Matthews on the bench, their best player out of the game, down by 14. A tough break for the Hokies. Dowdell, that's a two. Five points for the freshman. When they've penetrated, they've been successful. And they've got away from it. And, and I'm a really admiring Gordon stick to it of this. And uh, you, he's played, he's limited, but uh, still providing a lift on that penetration. Well, Dowdell's going to have to pick up the slack. He and Matthews are the third most prolific scoring duo in the Big East behind. Warwick and McNamara of Syracuse and Gordon and Okafor for Connecticut. Matthews and Dowdell average 24 points combined. Demetrius a foul for the shove along the baseline that sent Colvin Collins out of bounds. You know, since Stars mentioned McCarroll's good shooting, 11 for 11 early in the game, he's had trouble making jump shots. You blaming Doris? Well, uh, cause is, and effect. Is anybody <laughs> sacred on this telecast? <laughs> well, I want her to feel comfortable. I want her to feel the pain that I've had all week. A long year. <laughs> it's only been a year. It seems a lot longer. Gordon has 14 points. And they're trying to creep back in. They've outscored him four zip since Matthews went to the bench with his fourth foul. 
Very simple offense. Little back screens, down screens. Dowdell a strip. What great hands this Virginia Tech team has on defense. I just love their run defense. without their star. And that's really uh, Seth Greenberg said we chatted with him the other day. They need the defense to jumpstart the offense because they're just not a good enough offensive team to generate points without the defense helping. He really doesn't have a great back to the basket guy either, although Matthews is more than adequate. And they're not the power guys that you see on the pit for, uh, team. I think Collins could mature into one. Oh. Unselfish teamwork, extraordinary, and Chevy. Take the Chevy to the levee. Our apologies to Don McLean. Yeah. <laughs> and anybody else with hearing in our audience. <laughs> and you two certainly weren't dry last night. A little reach in. Harris was fouled. Sunday, the Sixers are trying to stay alive in the playoff hunt when they take on the Pistons. Then at 3.30 Eastern, some will see the Spurs face the Kings. Or in a game that was just added to the schedule, let's see the Knicks at the Bucks. That's on ABC, an NBA Sunday doubleheader, 12.30 Eastern time, ABC, the home of the NBA Finals. And a foul. Chevy bag in the head. Jamie's pretty good with the officials. Of course, yep. you know, they initiate a lot of the difficulties on the floor, but uh, he just does his job over there. Jamie was a fine player at TCU. Back in the late 70s, led the Southwest Conference. In assists as a senior, as an all-conference player, hit a shot at the buzzer that beat Texas to win the Southwest Conference. I'm not sure he's the best coach in the family, though. This is like Maggie. Maggie at DePaul, working with the women's team. You were going from the elbow. You were going through her roster with her out some, of Pittsburgh. Uh, some nice players. Taft apparently got hit in the face. Are you surprised there aren't more of those lacerations or eye scratches because of the guys trying to strip and go up, Jay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, some guys choose to wear goggles, and I'm surprised there aren't more guys losing teeth. Guys mm -hmm. wear mouthpieces, and it's always the inadvertent one that gets you. Right. And sometimes your teammate. Exactly. McCarroll has come in for Taft. Still being treated on the bench. Pittsburgh shot the ball beautifully here in the second half. And an offensive foul called by Jim Haney. And a nice little, they run that little post exchange from the wings, and he just can't move. And unfortunately, Callaway called for a second foul. Just wasted one there. Wanted Carl Krauser to feel what it's like. Matthew still on the bench. It's almost reality setting in there, wasn't it? The way he was yeah. shaking his head. Well, it's conceivable this could be the last game of his career. I, I think they'll get invited and should be invited to the NIT. I yeah. would think so. He's very well. deserving of it. Krauser, a miss, and here's Gordon. Nice move, but couldn't make the tough fadeaway. Out of bounds, Pittsburgh ball. Got to get fouled there. He turned away from the contact instead of going right into it. Are you surprised at his foot speed, though? I mean, he's really did a, they did a great job getting them taped up at halftime. Now he's really gutted it out. Under nine minutes to go. Pittsburgh, the number one seed, the regular season champion. They were 13 and three in the Big East in regular season play for the third year in a row. Page fouled. Oh, goodness, it's becoming a foul festival. Both teams over the limit now with eight and a half to go. Once in a while, uh, guys get the ball. I mean, I just, it just didn't affect the play. We get hit harder on the subway. Or at least I do. The third foul on Xavier and Dowdell. That's what you look like when you walked in here at 9 o'clock this morning. <laughs> well, I didn't have Tony Salisi to take care of me there, trainer, unfortunately. But a tough customer, Taft. Jay, would you suggest the big man camp for a guy like that? You know, we always talk about Pete Noel, what he's been able to do with youngsters. I would suggest that to any big guy that wants to improve his footwork, improve his understanding of the game. There's not a better teacher of the game, in my judgment, than Pete Noel. 
You may work the camp, huh? This year you're gonna. I always talk. I always talk to him about being able to go out there and work it. And I may. I may run out there this summer and work it. As a, as a passer, I was gonna say, are you running the concessions? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Andy Dixon didn't like this most recent foul call. It's on McCarroll. You mentioned Jamie was a fine player. He played professionally over in Holland, and he nearly died. He collided in a heavy collision with an opponent, ruptured his pancreas. He was in the hospital for three months, lost 50 pounds, had several operations, and obviously recovered. Thank you for the medical update. I was just pleased to finish that uninterrupted. Matthews a miss. Collins the put back. Brown double team got it off to Krauser. Virginia Tech in a serious hole now. Down by 15. Brown missed a three. Demetrius couldn't tip it. Gordon on a run out. Lobs it up. And the finish by Sales. They have Matthews back in. Playing with four fouls. That bucket for Marcus Sales, his first of the ball game. You know, I would be tempted to play some zone for Virginia Tech. Uh, Syracuse was very effective against them. I, I know they're behind 13 points, but they're going to run some clock unless they get an easy one anyway, Pitt. Yeah, I don't think he wants, Seth Greenberg wants to surrender to the temptation to play zone. They've made man-to-man -man their foundation. They've been, won seven of their last ten with it, and I think he wants to stick with it, not only for today, but for the future of the program as well. He didn't get a good angle on that pass to Troutman, and Gordon very alert. An awkward fall by Troutman, but he's all right. Coleman Collins, the finish. For the Hokies making a little run for Coach Greenberg. Tell you, it's a tribute to him and his guys. They have really hung tough, taken a lot of hits, and they're still ticking. Got to go inside here if you're Pittsburgh. And by the way, Seth Greenberg has the best hairstyle in the league. Troutman fouled as he handled the pass. You uh, get the same price he does when you go. The same barber. Sweeping the nation, that look. That's his fifth and final foul. And Matthews just fouled out. Really foul good. Was called on him. Really good call by Jamie Dixon. They went into their four play, little box set, quick duck in, and got Matthews isolated on Troutman in the post. Is that their number four play? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that. Excuse me. Play number four. Thank you very much. Uh, you mentioned the ability to get it inside, and they just I don't know about bang that. people. Yeah, there's so many. The last two have been kind of cheap, haven't That's they? A tough one. Oof. Especially when you walk over there and say, "Look, I have 14 points, 10 rebounds, and 12 bruises." Well, a triple double. This sort of proof of what you were suggesting that they become physical. I think referees ten, knowing Virginia Tech, that's not their style. Not to let them get away with it. Seth Greenberg really likes this group. He has appreciated their intensity. He's tried to instill some discipline and that attitude of hard work. And he said, I think for a couple months, they didn't really know what to make of me. And over time, the relationships have formed. And I think the part of what they've accomplished this year is because of that unity and good chemistry. Actually, that's what Jay and I feel. We don't know what to expect from you. <laughs> Time out here in New York. PN2's exclusive presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. And in part by Miller High Life. To live simply, proudly, boldly, manly. This is the High Life. John McDonough, Bill Raftery, Jay Billis, Doris Burke, our producer Mike Molinari, and our director John McDonough, our ESPN2 crew. Delighted to have you with us. First of four games. In the Big East Championship quarterfinals, the number one seed Pittsburgh with an 11-point lead. We've talked about their interior passing, the draw of the double team, and Chris Taft with the nice look. And this team goes to the glass. Another great pass, the no look. A the good look and the no look. We mentioned all the things they took from last year. You mentioned how good they were last year. They're just so unselfish. Good feel for one another. They get the spots, they make themselves available, and they catch the ball, Sean McDonough. Essential. 
Difficult to score if you do not catch the ball. Matthews out of the game for Virginia Tech. They'll have to come back without their best player. Speaking of catching, that was pretty good by Collins in traffic. Now McCandies with the foot back. Philip McCandies with his first bucket. They're right there again. So this, this team could have gotten down when Matthews went out, but Seth Greenberg got that last time out very upbeat. He wants his team to stay in it because they are still in it. And then regardless of the outcome, this has been a terrific year for Virginia Tech basketball. Perhaps turning a corner, very good young nucleus. They lose only Matthews. That's a major subtraction, obviously, but he's the only senior. They have no juniors. And they have what they believe is a good recruiting class coming in as they head off to the Atlantic Coast Conference. I think every coach enjoys his first year. It's a hard year, but those guys hung with you. You know, it's you get the job frequently because the program has been uh, hurting or in disarray. And these guys are the selling agents for you. I mean, they tell kids, look, this guy's for real. He knows what he's doing. He's got a good staff. They care about us. I think it carries over the rest of your life. You always remember that first team. And they've got help on the way. Marquis Cook, an ACC caliber player, headed in. And Carlos Dixon was their third leading scorer last year. Redshirting this year with a foot injury. He'll be back. And he's a fine player. He was one of their best players last year. Made some big shots for them last year. Great hands by Brown. But Collins was alert for Virginia Tech. And there's a three from the quarterback, Brian Randall. We've got an eight-point game here. Yeah, this is getting interesting. This will test your jump shots now. That'll go back inside. They're so good at putting you away, though, time-wise, and then getting a good one. Nice. Look at the way they the pace when they run through the lane. Great Tra spacing. Trouser. Fouled before the shot, says Tim Higgins. Championship week is presented by 7-Up Games on both ESPN and ESPN2. Right here on ESPN2, following this game, Boston College and the defending national champion Syracuse Orangemen. Also to Eastern on ESPN, Minnesota and Purdue in the first round of the Big Ten on ESPN HD. If you have beautiful high-definition television. You know, I'm thinking of Brandon Knight now simply because he bought into what Ben Howland wanted on offense. Krauser, the apprentice watching they just have that flow where they can turn it up if they want or if they want a fast break they can go after it but it's just a nice even tempo no rush jay i think krauser's better because oh. he can knock down free throws he's 78 79 percent from the line he can score and that was one thing that brandon knight struggled with a little bit knight may have been a better leader but i think overall krauser might be the better player but, but i meant the philosophy so hey, no absolutely you're absolutely right krauser is one apprentice who will not be fired Collins. Eight points for Coleman, freshman from Stone Mountain, Georgia. He missed the first seven games of the season with a broken bone in his left foot, just 17 years old, Coleman Collins. He's playing against guys who are six or seven years older than him out here tonight. It's a big difference. It sure is. Brown looked like he traveled. And he gets the lay-in. Seth Greenberg up off the bench, giving the traveling signal. Under five to go. Pittsburgh by ten. But a comfortable margin through most of this half. Nice show. Gordon just not able to shed the defense. McCandy is a strong baseline drive. And that's one time Troutman didn't get to the baseline, tried to use the hand. A little fatigue maybe by the big fella. Well, he got lifted up by that fake a little bit. And one of the few times that you will see Pittsburgh not only get beat baseline, but with no help coming over. In the tab. And he's fouled. Looked like Randall. Guilty of the reach in. Let's check in with Doris Burke. Guys, Jerron Brown with 132 games played, number one all-time in Pittsburgh history. Ironically, he almost ended up at the University of Kentucky. And a guy who can do so many things. Signed under Rick Pitino. When Pitino left, he elected to sign for the University of Pittsburgh under Ralph Wizard Willard. 
When he left, he just decided, heck, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay. And guys, over the last two years, whenever I've covered the University of Pittsburgh, inevitably, as balanced as they are, the opposing coach, when you talk about Pittsburgh personnel, the first word out of their mouth is Jerron Brown. He just brings so many things to this basketball team. Very much the heart and soul, isn't he? He can play so many people, too. I mean, perimeter or post-up people. He makes all the big plays, and they're going to have to make a few the way this Virginia Tech team, team keeps hanging in. Randall thought they really could have used to get even closer and bring the house on their side with some of the people filing in for the B.C. Syracuse game. Look like they want to take up the cause of the Hokies if they can tighten this up just a little bit. You got to think this Patino guy is highly regarded. I'm not sure people realize the impact. Michael Bradley left there. I agree with what Doris said the first time. I think Ralph Willard is a wizard. Well, if Ralph thinks he is, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> now the head coach at Holy Cross. Boy, you don't leave anybody unscathed. I, I, I didn't think Doris needed to correct herself. Ralph is a wizard. Sandbagger on the golf course, but a wizard. Nonetheless, Page made the free throw. Former Pittsburgh and now at Holy Cross. Earlier at Western Kentucky. So Kevin on the Louisville staff. 13 points for Page. 14 for Page. The lead 10. Half still on the bench after being hit in the eye. Did make a return. And some time on the bench now. McCarroll in with Troutman. Brown, Page, and Kowser. The candies. Authoritative inside, but didn't get the shot to drop. Well, not a lot of offensive rebounds available, are there? Two big ones by Page in a row. I mean, he just went over Krauser. Uh, they, they've got to make it. It's one and done. Page might be the strongest two guard in the country. They let the bigs touch it. Look at this back cut. Nice help. Down to 10 to shoot and 320 left in regulation time. Pittsburgh the ball in a 10-point lead. Bowser a miss, the rebound Gordon. Dowdell ahead of the pack and the easy lay-in. Bowman hustled back but couldn't get ahead of Dowdell. He has seven. And again, they have it down to single digits with three minutes to go. The little guy can scoot. I'm sorry. Yeah, when Krauser takes it in there, somebody's got to rotate back. That one guard fronts that does happen on occasion. Almost a steal out high by Collins. And a timeout called by Pittsburgh. Zimmer Dixon didn't like the way that possession was going. They'll have 18 seconds to shoot out of the timeout. Championship week presented by 7-Up. Continues tonight on ESPN at 7 Eastern. The ACC first round action as Clemson takes on Virginia. And then at 9.30 here at Madison Square Garden, Villanova and Providence in Big East quarterfinal action. Available in high definition on ESPN HD. Let's look at the RPI. How about Virginia, Jay? You're our bubble expert. Well, I think it's going to be tough. I think they're going to have to win a couple of games to get in. Their non-conference schedule for the Cavaliers really, really bad. The best team that they beat was Iowa State, which is ranked in the 60s, maybe the 70s by now. Florida State's the big question because they didn't win a road game in the ACC this year, last year, and part of the year before. So Florida State might be questionable as to whether they can get in. It's amazing how Duke has done since Jay left. <laughs> Number one. Too shabby when he was there. Brown, the miss, and here's a chance for the Hokies to get closer. Down by eight, two and a half to go. Got to get to the rim. They are. Dowdell makes the fadeaway in a timeout called by Seth Greenberg. These turkeys will not quit. Uh, you mentioned putting it on the floor, Jay, and they do nice jobs spinning the perimeter people. I mean, they drive you one way, set you up, and then that drops them. And notice how the ball's all the way over to the right, so there's no reach around possible. And then the ability to knock it down. This is just solid individual basketball by Dowdell. And pretty good defense by Carl yeah. Krauser. He cut him off, made him turn back to the other side, right into help, and a very tough shot made by Xavier Dowdell. As good as Pitt helps, I'm surprised on those spins that somebody isn't coming up and grabbing it. You know, you give Seth Greenberg a lot of credit for keeping his team in it right after Bryant Matthews 
fouled out. They had a timeout. And Greenberg was very enthusiastic with his team when they came back to the huddle. He and that's a large part why I think they're still right here. He doesn't want to go home, Sean. They, they get the small change, and Seth's got to be careful. Uh, so Timmy put the whistle on. That's like that warning. Yeah, well, Dowdell did a little dance, too, that earned him a glare from the official. Fourth foul on Dowdell. That's a flop! These games are like a mistake or two away from winning or losing. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't a good play that length of the floor to be detected. Well, why do you want to foul so yep. far away from the basket? Even, you know, with very little chance you're going to be able to take it away from Krauser. The Hokies were down by 11, 55-44. When Matthews went out with 7.14 to go with his fifth foul. There's a certain toughness about this guy. He, he exudes, and I think they gravitate to as teammates. Krauser was a boxer growing up. Timeout after the two free throws. Eight point game, 2.23 to go. We'll be interested to listen in on that conversation. Here, a double bonus situation, Virginia Tech. Perhaps in a situation where eventually they'll need to foul, and it'll be two free throws the rest of the way for Pitt. The arrow also favors Pitt. Here's Dowdell for Virginia Tech. Pitt's got to force them to use some clock. They've been getting quick hitters. There's the spin they should have had. And finally, the travel. Stepped up defense. Troutman almost had that little spin dribble, Jake. He did, and Coleman Collins was the one that banged into him and really caused that travel. But I think Dowdell was looking for a foul as he got into the. So was Seth Greenberg. Tim Higgins and Mike Stevens each blew the whistle at the same time. When he saw Higgins call the travel, he asked. Stevens, if he was going to call a foul, and Stevens shook his head no. Good hands on defense by Randall. Oh, my goodness. Carroll almost decapitated there. They called a foul on Callaway. Two games now and in tapes as well. The hands of this perimeter defense has been extraordinary. Playing passing lanes, coming up with it, and Carroll lucky. He's intact. Ed Greenberg, a homecoming for him from Long Island, 47 years old. And it's been a cultural adjustment for him, living in Blacksburg, out in that beautiful countryside of Southwest Virginia. But he's pretty much been a big city guy his whole life, living here in the metropolitan area. He was in Southern California, at Long Beach State, in Tampa, South Florida. I love them saying his wife picked the house out or his wife made all these big decisions. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Well, he's tried to bring some of the creature comforts of uh, the Northeast to his uh, home in Blacksburg. He paved over his front yard completely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a social knock desecrating our beautiful area. <laughs> so his wife cooks a little more. Saves on the gardening well, in Blacksburg. They don't go out to dinner quite as much as they used to in the big cities. Oh, there are some fine diamond choices in Blacksburg. Doesn't look like Seth missed many either. Wow. <laughs> Relentless. Pittsburgh. That's been a standard the last few years, too. Even with all their successful teams, the free throw shooting usually not very good. But down. They got it to 69% of the conference games this year, which was. An improvement. That's the kind of thing that can hurt you in the NCAA tournament. Great containment by Brown. Forces a deep three. An air ball from Randall. Incomplete pass for the quarterback. Dowdell scores in a quick timeout by Coach Greenberg. 11 points for Dowdell. He's been big, especially since Matthews fouled out with seven and change to go. How good a job have they done stretching this game? Still in it with a minute and a half to play. The next game here at the Garden is Syracuse and Boston College. They're getting ready to go as we speak. Tonight in the doubleheader, Connecticut and Notre Dame. Mecca Okafor's status unknown with a stress fracture in his back. Providence and Villanova. Villanova won a wild one last night, as did Notre Dame. Villanova beat Seaton Hall in the last second shot. Notre Dame survived the last second shot from West Virginia to beat John Beeline's very well-coached team. 
If Notre Dame has to go against Connecticut without a Mecca Okafor, you can bet that the Irish are going to be a little more aggressive in attacking the basket, not just settling for threes. That puts a lot of pressure on Armstrong and Bone, uh, who's had to play secondary roles in a sense defensively with Okafor inside. Full court pressure from the Hokies, down by seven. Krauser gets it over half court. They'll look to run some clock. They're going to keep it with these two. The giveaway on Brown and Krauser. Brown, a good choice. He's just a 61% free throw shooter. Callaway called for his fourth. Now Brown shooting two. Seth doing some coaching on the sideline now, getting ready without the timeout. What he wants run, telling guys where to be, which play to run. Galloway goes out and the Candies comes in with Gordon. They have Gordon, Randall, Dowdell. The Candies and Collins. It's missed four of his last five free throws as they try to put this one away. One out of two on that trip for Brown, an eight-point lead. Got to think about getting in the lane and kicking it out for an open three. We're taking it all the way here, huh? Gordon nice shouldn't get by Brown. Randall missed the three out of the corner. He's had a couple of good looks at a three and can't knock him down. There's that long arm. Comes in handy. Brown is amazing. That was anybody's ball, but he's got that, what, 37, 38 reach. That's like a 6'9 wingspan, something like that. And those long arms make him a very good defender in the post and an excellent offensive rebounder as well. Brown back to the line to shoot two more. And the first one good. This is one methodical basketball team. That they are. They just grind it out. I mean, if this team were, you mentioned Carl Krauser being a boxer. If, if you likened this team to a boxer, it's just body blow, body blow, blow, and knockout. I mean, a slippery they body. Take you the whole, they take you the whole 15 rounds. Now, losing two of those at Amateur, they want to fight him. Dowdell, a nice slice to the bucket, and he missed it. Krauser trying to run away from the fouls. Oops. Almost. They lost the handle. And they just did get it over. And then the foul. Well, let me ask you this, fellas. If people are filling out their brackets, say you're going to be in a pool and you could uh, just pick any team to, to win the tournament. How many teams would you pick to win it ahead of Pittsburgh? I don't do pools. Just a couple. I mean, you can't think of more than three or four that you'd say, I okay, I take them about over. as good a shot as anybody, don't they? Yeah, I think they do. Well, remember Beheim uh, early in the year was saying he thought they were the best team, then he went up and beat them. Uh, they, they are just tough. I mean, they win comfortably 10-5. They, they just sort of know how to put you away. The only thing they don't do is shoot it from the guard spots. I mean, Krauser can make shots. Page can make shots. But they're not terrific perimeter shooters. And that's where they expect McCarroll to come in and make some shots. He didn't make them today, but he's capable. But he's more of a streaky shooter, in my judgment. I mean, he's a, he can knock shots down, but I wouldn't consider him a drop-dead good shooter. What do you have? 26 points against Georgia. This year he had 28 all season long last year, so quite a turnaround for him. Jamie Dixon, one of the most successful rookie coaches in the history of college basketball, won the first 18 games. He's the first rookie coach to uh, win the Big East regular season title in the history of the league, spanning 25 years. Go no time now. Send it in. Jerome Brown with the delivery. Special. The big arrow. Got to respect what Virginia Tech did, not only in this game, but beating Rutgers yesterday. Done a great job. Fight all the way to the end. Dowdell with the line drive elbow jumper, and then Seth Greenberg a timeout. And the fans are booing, with Syracuse and BC fans in particular, would like to see these guys vacate the premises and have the Orangemen and Eagles take center stage. Pittsburgh trying to repeat history. They've been to the finals the last three years. In the 2001 final, playing their fourth game in a row in as many days, they lost to Boston College. One year later, they lost to Connecticut in a memorable double overtime final. And last season, they brought home the Big East Tournament Championship trophy for the first time, defeating Connecticut.
trying to get to the championship game for the fourth straight year. They're going to make it to the semifinals, barring a major development here in the last 16 seconds. How about that note? The first rookie coach to win 18 straight, surpassing Bill Guthridge, correct? From Carolina, his rookie year with 17. Had a pretty good team himself that he inherited from Dean Smith with Antoine Jameson and That's right. Vince Carter, Shaman Williams. As Bill Hodges set the standard, he won 33 games with Larry Bird at Indiana State before losing pretty the good. national championship game. Who would you pick from that list, National Coach of the Year? Uh, Phil Martelli. Yeah, that's why I would go for two. How about you? I would agree. And all have a, had extraordinary years. It's funny you mentioned that 79 team, Indiana State. Can you name another player from that team other than Larry Bird? No. The guard. I can name one. Bobby Heaton, Carl Nix. Well, Nix. That's the guy Nix. Carl Nix and Bobby Heaton were there, the other two that I can remember. What did you do when you were... Did you have any toys when you were... <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you have a sandbox? <laughs> Twenty points for Brown. He leads all scores. Pittsburgh with its 28th win of the year. They go to 28 and three, and bolstering their claim for the possibility of a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. They won nine of their last 12 Big East tournament games. Final score in our first of four games here today: Pittsburgh 74, Virginia Tech 61.